Hey guys, what's up? It's Ripe again. In today's video, my homeowner association pushed me off my roof because I installed satellite dishes that devalued the neighborhood according to them. Here is what happened. Subscribe to Ripe on YouTube and hit the bell to turn on notifications. I moved into a new neighborhood about three months before the story begins. In that short time I already knew that the HOA was made up of crazy people that like to make crazy rules. Many of them had to do with houses looking a certain way. A limited number of acceptable colors that you can make your doors, not having any kind of custom made windows and even if you had an overhang it had to be only a certain height and could only come out of your house an exact measurement. It really was nuts and I got a letter in the mail from them one day saying that the HOA was holding a meeting about a new rule they wanted to put in place. That being no satellite dishes allowed because it made the neighborhood ugly according to them. I at first thought this was ironic for me because I work for a TV provider and my main job is installing satellite dishes. Working for them actually has some perks and while I don't get free service, I do get a nice enough discount that is the best option for me. I never heard anything about when the meeting even took place and I found out from my neighbor what this HOA does to get what they want. Instead of an open forum where citizens can have input, the HOA board members have a private closed meeting so they can do anything they want. I'm not an easy person to intimidate so I decided to just go ahead and install my satellite dish anyway. While I know the HOA can regulate a lot of things there is no way they have a right to limit my choice of TV provider. Since I know how to install them myself I just picked up a basic dish and went into my room to install it. While I was up there I heard yelling below me and saw a guy that I recognized as one of the HOA people. I was not going to fight with somebody like this so I just went back to installing the dish and thought that once I got down I could tell him that he was not going to stop me. Instead though he actually climbed up the ladder onto my roof and started pulling at the dish screaming about how it was against the rules and I was making the neighborhood ugly. When I reached to try and stop him from ripping and destroying the dish he shoved me hard. I honestly don't really remember falling off of the roof, just my face down in the dirt and a searing pain going through my arm. I was lucky that the yelling got neighbors attention and when I fell off one of them called an ambulance for me. He not only pushed me off of my own roof but broke my arm on top of it. All because he decided it was a good idea to go onto not only my property but on my actual house and try to start a fight with me. One might think at this point the HOA would send an apology or something to try and stop me from wanting to sue the hell out of them but instead I came home to a letter in my mailbox that I was being fined for breaking the HOA rules. At this point it really did not matter who was in the right or wrong when it came to the dish. The HOA guy had assaulted me and there is never an excuse for something like that. I sued not only him but the entire HOA for my accident. The man who did it was charged with assault and the other members got a warning because it came forward that they all knew he was going to trespass on the property of anybody that was putting up a satellite dish. He had to pay me for the hospital visit and for all the work I would miss. There was no way for me to do my job with a broken arm and even if I could do it the safety issue issues would be too crazy so I was out of work until my arm was healed. I wasn't done with the HOA just yet and also sued them for violating my rights by telling me that I was not allowed to use a provider that I wanted for TV. It turns out that they went way over what they were allowed to do and while door colors and sidewalk lights are within their right they cannot stop me from having a satellite dish on my home. While this whole thing was going on the HOA was scrambling and trying to figure out a way to get out of this whole thing without too much backlash. They were fined by the courts and my lawyer ended up getting me a small settlement with them. If they had never made an illegal by law then I would have never gotten pushed off of the roof. Of course the guy who pushed me resigned from the HOA which is code for he was forced out. He did not end up having to go to jail and instead got community service hours. The HOA board was angry at me for suing them and getting them in trouble for their stupid fake rules. I wanted to get a little bit of revenge on them but it had to wait until my arm was fully healed. I did not mention this before but during the whole roof fight he did manage to rip off my dish and it was basically destroyed. When I got a new dish I made sure this time to get a nice big one that nobody could miss seeing. 
That was not the real revenge though. The entire neighborhood already did not like the HOA, so when they got wind of what happened, they were even more upset with them. They did not want to stage a big riot or have the HOA shut down like others have done. Instead, I got my revenge by telling all of them how wonderful my company was and that going with a satellite dish is a great idea. Many were sold on the idea and I told them that if they ordered the dish, I would come and install it for them for free. I did not care about the money at this point, I just wanted to really stick it to them. Of course, some did not want to change their provider and that was more than okay. Enough did though and that now you cannot go down a block without seeing a big satellite dish on a few roofs. It drove the HOA mad but they had no ability to do anything about it. They hated finally being in a position where they had no power after a long time of controlling anything they wanted. If I'm being totally honest, they might have gotten away with fining me for the original satellite dish and maybe just having a judge telling them to remove the rule and it would all quietly go away. When a man decides to go onto my roof and break my arm over something that is not hurting anybody though, that kind of thing cannot just happen quietly. He knows that if he goes anywhere near me again, I can call the police and have him put in jail this time. I have no idea how he managed to get away without it to begin with. My guess is he knows somebody that is just as scummy as he is. And yeah, ripe stars, if you still enjoy the stories about crazy HOAs, then please don't forget to like the video because that would help me tremendously. Thank you so much. The next one was posted by user Sierra TO on our own subreddit r slash ripe stories and it is an absolute XXL story. It's titled Stop Yelling or I Won't Sell You My House Part 1. This was back in the year 2000, well technically it started at the end of 1999. Background, we moved into our home when I was 5. It was a great neighborhood at the time, the block was filled with families, the kids, about 10 of us fairly close in age, all played together at a variety of houses. The lawns were all well kept and we would even have block parties that were potluck style. It was a great place to grow up, as is common when neighborhoods age, they can become run down. We lived in a state that had a consistent double digit population growth rate, so new homes were and still are perpetually being built. Good neighbors would move out to buy new homes and the new neighbors were always not so keen on keeping up their properties. We lived on a corner lot right around the block from a school, by this time I was in my mid to late 20s. The kids started kicking in the slats on our wooden fence and we constantly had to replace them. It got so bad that my mom kept a stock of slats in our backyard for quick repairs. Then my mom renovated our home and because she was tired of the fence being kicked in, she had the construction crew replace the wooden fence with a concrete block wall while they were doing other things on the house. The day they poured the concrete, kids came and destroyed the new concrete. The concrete guys did not tell us they were leaving, so we did not have anyone out there to monitor it while the concrete set. Thankfully, we found the kids that did it and their parents paid to fix it, but it was just another problem to add to our neighborhood woos. And then our concrete fence started getting tagged. We would paint over it only to have it happen again and again. By this time, my mom and I were over it and the neighborhood. We barely got to enjoy our new renovations before we decided to start looking for a new home. The neighborhood had gone downhill too much. We decided to do an FSBO, which means for sale by owner. I worked for a business broker at the time. We occasionally had houses on the business properties, so my boss said we could use their contract so that everything was done correctly. My mom left it in my hands because she had no idea how to do anything like that. I immediately went to work creating a beautiful two-sided brochure about the house. I even added a photo of the house on the front, rare back then, along with pertinent details about the house and on the back I had a floor plan of the house. We used my mom's new laser printer, which was a new thing back then. We also bought a sign with one of those round tubes for flyers and put it on our lawn. This was a week before Christmas. The buyer two days before Christmas, my siblings got into a really bad mountain biking accident that required a life flight, helicopter ambulance to the hospital for a traumatic brain injury. Needless to say, selling the house was the last thing on our minds. We spent days with my sibling at the hospital. We went home only to shower and sleep. 
We did not even look at our answering machine. Thankfully, my sibling made a full recovery. Finally, we came home and saw that we had messages on our answering machine. It started out fine. There was an inquiry about the home, some messages from family checking on my sibling and then another message from the guy inquiring about our home and with each message they got worse and worse with him being absolutely abusive towards the end of the recordings. Mind you, this was all over the course of two days. It is now Christmas morning and at 7am our phone rings. We are absolutely exhausted from the whole ordeal with my sibling and tending to them at home. And we all decided to sleep in, so we ignored the phone. Unfortunately for us, the caller kept calling back every 5-10 to 10 minutes. With that many calls, I was starting to worry that something happened with a family member and that this was an emergency, so I got up and answered the phone. Finally! I hear on the other end. It's a male voice that I don't recognize. Hello? I ask. I've been trying to call you for ages. He practically yells. I'm sorry, may I ask who is calling? I reply. I'm a buyer for your house. He says in a condescending tone. I apologize. We had a family emergency and he cuts me off. You cannot put up a house for sale and then ignore buyers. He snaps. I do apologize but we had a family emergency. He cuts me off again and tells me that he doesn't care and that this is not his problem. He goes on to tell me that if I put up a house for sale that I need to be available to take the calls. I asked him if I could speak now, he huffily agrees. I explained to him that my sibling had been in a horrific accident and had to be taken by helicopter to the hospital. I also reminded him that it was Christmas day and I would be happy to talk to him tomorrow at a more appropriate hour. I don't care if it is Christmas day, you will talk to me now, he screams. Merry Christmas, I said and then hung up the phone. He tried calling back so I took the phone off the hook and went back to bed. The next day he called back at a more appropriate hour, thank goodness, and I told him that we are indeed selling the house but that I would appreciate it if he kept his tone and demeanor more professional. He said he wanted a tour of the house. I agreed to it as long as he understood that he would not be allowed in the room my sibling was recovering in. He agreed and came over. It turned out that he lived a few blocks away and wanted to buy the house for one of his children. I took him on a tour except for my sibling's room and as I pointed the way to leave he ran over to the door that my sibling was recovering in and started walking around. I told him to immediately leave, he said he saw what he wanted and went into the living room. He said he wanted to buy the house and put down a deposit, I told him that I would have to talk to my mom to discuss it and I would let him know. By this point I'm so angry that I wanted to tell him to kick rocks. I told my mother everything that happened and she said that the house needed to be sold one way or another before the new house was finished being built. Her financing was contingent upon the sale of the home. I told her we only had the sign out for a week and that I was sure we could find another buyer. One who did not yell, harass and disobey simple requests. She decided to continue with this buyer. Damn. And now we get to part 2 of the story. Over the next couple of weeks we met up with the buyer. He insisted on putting a 50k deposit in the house so that we could not sell it to someone else. We both told him that was far too much money because if he broke the contract for any reason that money would be forfeited as per the contract. We both suggested that he reduce it to $5,000 but he flat out refused. Throughout all of this he had stupid demands put into the contract and was demanding things that were already in the contract. He was also harassing me, yelling at me until he was so red faced that I thought he would have a heart attack and belittling me. Unfortunately by this time it would be impossible to get another buyer and close the house in time for the new house so we were stuck with him. The buyer wanted the house immediately but our house was still being built. In our contract was a rent back option that would allow us to continue living in the house until our house was built and that he would pay his mortgage payment and only his mortgage payment until we were able to move into our new home. He really should have read the contract before he signed, which I encouraged him to do multiple times. As the time grew nearer, my mom called to remind him to bring proof of his mortgage payment so that we would know how much to pay him each month while he still lived there. He said that it was none of our business since we were going to be gone. My mom explained the rent back and he freaked out. 
What? He screamed. I never agreed to anything like that. You must be out of the home on the day we close. My mom handed the phone to me and I asked him if he even read the contract. I reminded him that I have told him over and over to carefully read the contract and it is now obvious that he hadn't. I told him to read every word of the contract before calling me back. Honestly, it was a standard house contract with the exception of the rent back, but even that is fairly common. My neighbor across the street was a realtor and he helped me with that part because the contract I got from work did not include anything like that. He said they had and he would get me the correct verbiage to add to the contract so everything was completely legal. The buyer eventually called us back and said he did not want the house anymore and demanded his deposit back. I reminded him that the contract stated that if he broke the contract that he forfeited his deposit which we did explain to him when he made the deposit. I also reminded him that we suggested a lower amount but he refused because he wanted the house so badly. I told him that he had a choice. He could either finish buying the house or lose his 50k deposit for contract breach. He hurled many swear words, derogatory comments and whatnots. I actually ended up hanging up on him because of the abuse but when he called back I realized that he did not even know we had hung up until he got the funny tone. I informed him that I would not continue to listen to this sort of abuse and that the next time he spoke to us it better be in a more civil tone. I hung up again and then I took the phone off the hook for the rest of the day. And the next one is part 3 of the story. Eventually closing time came. We went to the mortgage company to sign all the papers and asked our agent if she knew what this mortgage would be. She did and apparently it was in the paperwork that his mortgage company had sent over. She gave us the amount, we wrote it down, finished up and then left. We went back to the house and the buyer was there demanding the keys. We told him we would hand over the keys when we were ready to move out as per the contract. He demanded to be let in to inspect the property. We told him that he needed to give us 24 hour notice in writing before being allowed inside. Honestly, had he been nicer I would have let him in but he had been so mean and rude throughout the entire ordeal that I was not feeling generous. He showed up about 10 minutes later with a handwritten note demanding access. He also told us that his mortgage payment was almost double what our mortgage company said it was. We told him that we knew what his payment was and he wouldn't get a penny more. He said that he was charging us extra for the inconvenience. I reminded him of the contract and he stormed off. Our new landlord showed up the next day to inspect and was puffed up and devious looking. He started going through the house telling us which things he expected to stay in the house after we moved out. It was mostly standard stuff like light fixtures etc but then he started in about the appliances. Back then, I'm not sure about now, it was standard to remove the appliances but since we had a brand new house with all the new appliances, part of a buy package, we did not care and it saved us having to remove and dispose of them. Whatever, he saw the alarm system on our house and demanded that it stays. So the funny thing about the alarm, our security company told us to leave it because it would get them a new client. They told us they would replace everything in our new house for free and even give us a 10% off deal on any additional security items we would need for our new house if we left the old unit there. So when the landlord demanded we leave it we pretended that it was a huge inconvenience but agreed to leave it. Now he is puffing up even more thinking he made a huge win. This alarm will be important soon, however when he reached my bathroom it was another story. He made the weirdest demand. I had a piece of raw fabric draped prettily over the mirror. It was held on by thumbtacks and pretty raffia bows that I made myself and hot glued to the tacks to hide them. I had put it there to hide the wearing edges of the massive mirror. He demanded that it stays. I told him that it was not a fixture therefore would not be staying. He said it was because it was attached to the wall. I showed him that it was only attached by thumbtacks. He started turning red. My mom put a hand on my arm and said that it was a little thing and that she would buy me more fabric. Okay yes it was not anything important but I hated him so much for all he had been putting us through so I did not want him to have it only because it was so important to him. However I capitulated in the end just to get him out of the damn house. My petty revenge was ruined. Fast forward we had about a month left on the build of our house and we were at the new house checking it out when we get a call from the alarm company that it has been triggered and asked if we needed police to come. 
We told them we were across town almost two hours away and yes to send the police. We immediately go home, sadly without seeing so much of our new home, to find out what happened. There was a note from the police that the back door was wide open but he could not find anything amiss. We looked around and we didn't see anything taken either, so we assumed that whomever opened the door must have been scared off by the alarm. A few days later, my mom received a bill from the police for a false alarm. I believe it was around 200 bucks. However, the day after we got the police bill, our landlord calls. He starts throwing a hissy fit because we are still there and have not packed as much as he would have liked. Aha, the culprit of our alarm trigger. I asked him if he came in the back door, he said he did. I asked him how he did that and he said it is really easy to open a locked door given enough time. I told him that he cannot do that, he said he didn't stay long because he forgot we had an alarm. We told him that we were charged by the police because of it and that we would be deducting it from our monthly payment. The hell you will, he screams. I told him that he had no right to enter the property when we were not home, nor did he give 24 hour notice. He set off the alarm so he can pay for it. I also told him that this was a huge violation of privacy and asked if he would rather we call the police instead and inform them that it was not a false alarm after all and that he is the one who broke into the house. That is my house, I can break in if I want, he blusters. You may have purchased the house but the contract, I start to say but he cuts me off. Fine, he says and hangs up. Our house is finished and we move everything except a couple items. You see, we paid for the entire month and the house finished in the middle of the month. I had given my boss my notice a couple days earlier so the plan was that my mom would go to the house and I would stay behind in the old house without furniture until the end of the month which is when my job would end. All I had in the house was some work clothes, a sleeping bag and pillow, my makeup, etc. Only the items I needed for work, sleep and shower. I sat on the floor, slept on the floor, etc. I had to eat out every day because I had no kitchen appliances, not even the microwave. During those two weeks I had arranged for various things like bulk garbage pickup, a landscaper to clean up the yard since the mower was now at the new house and a cleaning crew to come in the day before I moved out to give a very thorough cleaning of the house and new carpets as per contract. The downside of having a buyer who lives only a few blocks behind you and the fact that I live on the main road to the neighborhood is that he saw the moving vans, a whole different nightmare I will post about someday. The buyer calls the house, I'm not sure if he assumed that we moved out. I answered, hello? Where are my damn keys? He screams. We are paid up through the month, so you will get them on the last day of the month, I calmly answered. You have already moved out, I want my damn keys! He continues to scream. Well, we have mostly moved out, but I need to stay to finish out my work notice and to finish up the items in the contract. I will relinquish the keys exactly on the date in our contract, I explained. You will get out now or I will call the police, he bellows. Sir, you are welcome to call the police if you wish, but I have a copy of the contract with me. They will read it and then bid me good night. I have every legal right to be there and as we still have a few things in the contract to finish up, you will just have to be patient and wait two more weeks. And then I hung up. The police never came because he knew I was right. Two weeks later, all the contractors came and went and then the house was spotless. My few belongings packed in my car and I stopped by his house and handed them the keys before driving away. What he did not know was the movers, a nightmare for another time, had poked a hole in the wall with the corner of a piece of furniture and filled it in with white toothpaste to cover it up. The guy deserved it. I was never so happy as to be done with that horrific guy and I finally got my, albeit tiny, revenge. Enjoy the toothpaste. Little did we know that our beautiful new house would become an HOA nightmare. I will tell you about it sometime in the future. Thank you so much to user Sierra TO for posting this satisfying story. And if you want to share your own story, then please feel free to head on over to r slash ripe stories on Reddit and post your own story there. Either way, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you again tomorrow.